I welcome you again to the Abundant Living Series. I am Professor Stephen Adel, and my topic for today is the disciplines of those who live abundantly. Introduction. The disciplines of those who live abundantly. For those who are joining me for the first time, we started with this series with some earlier versions. First and foremost, I shared that abundant living requires abundant foundation. You need to have a secure foundation in order to be able to live abundantly. And in this uncertain world where practically everything seems to be relative, we need the equivalent of the North Pole or, or the True North. You recall that God created the world with a magnetic North. In the past, all compass pointed north. And once you have a compass and knew where you are going, you will not get lost. We have progressed, and now there's a global positioning system, but it all revolves around the few notes, because God has placed on earth a stable reference point. Whether you are in Google or you are maps, whatever you are, you can have direction. The equivalent also is required in our living. Amidst the uncertainties of life, we shared that Jesus Christ is the sure anchor which we can have as our true note or our reference point. When we come to the point where we know that our sins are forgiven because we have trusted in the redemption of Jesus Christ and we are washed by his blood and by faith, we have been saved. So for us to live is Christ and to die is gain. We have a sure reference point. I call it the organizing principle around which life revolves. Though I'm a professor of economics and leadership, I live a very simple life because my anchor is Jesus Christ and I need to ask, what will Jesus have me do? Or what will Jesus do in these circumstances? And in, invariably, I'm able to find my way, provided I'm willing to obey God. Second, I said that if you want to live abundantly, you require a certain balanced view of yourself so that you have self-esteem and you don't oscillate between the issue of pride of our achievements and self-depreciation of many people because they are not as educated, they are not as rich, they are not as beautiful or handsome as other people. Self-esteem can never be based upon relative position vis-a-vis -vis other people because there will be always people who are better than you and others who you are better than. However, if we base our self-esteem on what God has done for us and what God says about it, about us, we will be sure that we don't have an oscillating self-esteem. The Bible says that we are not to think of ourselves more highly than what we ought, but we are to think about ourselves with sober judgment. I believe that anyone who knows that they are made by God in his image and he breathed into us and became living souls, according to Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And beyond that, even when we sin, he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for us. For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only Son, and whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. When we have that type of knowledge that we are found, as Psalm 189, 14 will say, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I like the psalmist, he doesn't end it there. He says, and I know that very well. In other words, that assurance that we are value, 
of worth and our destiny is to be with God if we trust the Son Jesus Christ. On the other hand, we all know that there's something cynical about us that will laugh at us once you have brewed self-esteem because you know and I know that even our own best estimation and standards, we are not able to meet it. But thanks be to God, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, the blood of his son Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So we can have good self-esteem, not the prideful type, nor the self-depreciation, but one who can say that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. In fact, you are so uniquely made that God, God has no prototype of you. There's no one who has given your fingerprints or eyelids. And your contribution to family, country, and God can be the most unique because you were made unique. In the text session, I also drew our attention to the fact that to live abundantly requires abundant resources. And here I wasn't talking about having so plenty of money that you can buy whatever you want. Of course, there's a minimum amount of finances you need to live abundantly. Let me tell you, life requires some minimal resources and we'll talk about that as we go along the way. However, these resources we are talking about is more than physical and material resources. We are talking about spiritual resources. We are talking about social resources. We are talking about emotional resources. And each one of us will find a deficit in our life unless we are vitally linked to an eternal source, which is the Holy Spirit of God which he provides to those who have put their trust and their confidence in Christ. Then like Paul can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The good thing about this source of abundant, abundant living in God through his Holy Spirit that we can say with Paul, I know how to abound and how to abase. It does not depend upon your external conditions as much as they are important status, education, wealth, privileges, network. But it's an internal one like an Artesian well swelling up every day as you walk with the Lord. One of the hymns I like so much is when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. What a joy we have on our way. While we do his good will, he abide with us still and with all who trust and obey. One of the wonderful ways in living in this world is to know that you are not alone and you are vitally linked with God. And we come into the details how to plug in so that we receive abundant spiritual resources for our living that we have the capacity to build the type of social relationships and network with our family, with our work colleagues, so that we live abundantly, that we are emotionally stable and emotionally intelligent because we know where we are coming from, where we are going. And of course, with that type of stability, it becomes easier for us to earn the material needs to support our physical needs. Today, I want to go to another level because I'm introducing the fourth set of variables that are needed for abundant living. And in this one, we are not going to, I'm going to introduce it only today, and then we will spend literally weeks talking about them in detail. We live one thing about Christianity, which makes it seem as if to other people is contradiction, but not so, is that we live tapping into God by grace as if 
all depends upon Christ. And indeed, there are certain things we depend upon only Christ, like our salvation, the forgiveness of our sins, the provision of His Holy Spirit. But then, yeah, we must also live as, as if all depends upon us. Why? Because there are certain disciplines that for us to be able to realize our full potential, we must work at. And that's what I'm going to uh, touch today. It's almost like standard operating procedures of being a Christian. And I'm titling, titling them the disciplines of those who live abundantly. In other words, there are certain disciplines for us to be able to realize the full potential of abundant living. And as I said, I will introduce, first of all, there are spiritual disciplines whereby our relationship with God is maintained. And we'll be spending a week or two on spiritual disciplines which goes beyond being born again but what it entails to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. In other words, it's like your bulb or your light being linked to the source of power always. Because if at any time there's a disconnection, yes, the power, abundant resources, sources will be there, but you aren't going to get the full benefit and there will be darkness because you are not connected to the source of power. What it entails in these spiritual disciplines of faith, I'm talking about living faith, of walking in the light so that there's no sin between you and God, reading the Bible day and night, and being careful to obey all that is written in it, being in fellowship with other believers and the rest, and not being ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Again, one of the disciplines, spiritual, or the spiritual disciplines, is being able to arm yourself with the armor of God, not being afraid of Satan and his emissaries, neither think, taking them for granted because they are formidable enemies. They have been testing people since the days of Adam and Eve. But thank God, we put on the full armor of God and in the name of Jesus Christ and on the basis of our testimony we will be able to defeat him against all the wiles and all the threats that he may bring away. So we will have one session on the spiritual disciplines of those who live abundantly. Then we will talk about social disciplines, our relationship with one another. Jesus summed the, the law into two. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. In spiritual disciplines, you will find that over time, your love for God with your heart, your soul, your strength and body will be increasing and you will be enjoying daily and moment by moment fellowship with your Creator. When it comes to social disciplines, we will be looking at what it takes for us to live at peace with all men so long as it depends upon us. Whereby our life will be characterized by outreach of love, seeking the welfare of the people that we relate to, not being self-centered, not being selfish, taking advantage of others, but loving them, having peace with them, being kind and generous with one another, and be reciprocated, even praying for your enemies as the Bible enjoys. And it is wonderful to have friendship with people, fellowship with your church members, and if you happen to be blessed with a marriage, being one with your spouse. These social disciplines, if you go against them, you will not enjoy abundant living. Not that God has not made provision for you, but because you are not disciplined, 
says that you cannot eat your neighbor and have them. Thirdly, you are looking at a cluster of disciplines that has to do with our physical body. Listen, the Bible says that we have been bought with the price of Jesus Christ. We are not our own. And I agree with it. If we are Christians, Christ bought us with his blood. And I'm quoting from 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 19. But the church one says that our bodies constitute the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's wherein God wants to be worshipped and adored. The Bible, in contrast to other religions, has a high value of the human body. You can't have it better than that to be told that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, God in us and with us and among us. And there are certain disciplines we must go through in order to keep our temple, the body of Christ, in good shape. Managing stress, learning to have a, a positive and outgoing personality, eating well, sleeping well, making sure when there's the need for supplements, regular exercises. These are some of the things that we'll be looking at and the physical disciplines because when our bodies are in good health, it impacts not only our spiritual condition, even though they don't define it. But let me tell you, I haven't seen anybody with a bad stomachache shouting, praise the Lord. Even the worst or the best Pentecostals and the Charismatics, they look for antiacid. Let me tell you, your physical state may not define and does not define your relationship with God, but it defines your spiritual state as you feel it. So we'll be looking at that. Then my favorite subject, some of you may know that I'm a professor of economics as well as of leadership. We'll be looking at the economic and financial disciplines. In my school, I have about 300 employees, teachers, and supporting staff. So I, two years ago, decided to form a club called the Millionaires Club. I wanted everyone who works with me if, to start saving a minimum of 100 Ghana cities per month, which if we get a return of 17.5%, we will make them millionaires in 30 years. Guess what? Despite all my cajoling, having free lunches for, special lunches for them, Christmas parties, for those who join the Millionaires Club, we have only 41 members. Why? Because people who are earning an average of 4,000 cities are not prepared. To, be, to join the club and discipline themselves to invest. In this case, we have set a floor price of 300. And that, they don't want to be disciplined so that when they get their salary, they follow the formula which I introduced into the world some years ago. Now, many people quote it without a source to pay God, pay yourself, and pay your bills. 10, 10, 80, that the minimum any one of us should do is to guarantee a better future is to save 10% of our salaries as pay yourself because we come back to you in multiples and pay God. In other words, support God's work with a minimum of 10% and including those you use in meeting those of the, the needs of others who are disadvantaged and make sure that you don't live above 80% of your income. And yet, you know, people who are earning 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, some even 8,000, are not prepared to spend 300 Ghana cities to make themselves millionaires and guarantee their future. There are disciplines of uh, those who live abundantly in terms 
of their finances and how they manage their affairs. So we will spend some time to go about the disciplines of those who want to live abundantly, that they must attune themselves to some spiritual disciplines. They must do so for some social disciplines, as well as physical disciplines and economic disciplines. So we we'll go through the disciplines that should be, should characterize those who want to live abundantly. We will tie them all in. How do you bring them all together? And we'll be looking at that in the context of what I call purpose-driven living. Many of you have read the book of Rick Warren, The Purpose-Driven Life. He applied the importance of being purposeful and deliberate and intentional in your living when it comes to spiritual disciplines. We will be taking them further because my purpose driven living is both spiritual, social, economic, and physical. But at the core of it will be being intentional about how you live, being value-based, balancing personal, relational, and work life, learning to set smart goals, and managing each of your lives to the best of your ability. Therefore, it is my pleasure to say, in conclusion, that Abundant living requires first and foremost abundant foundation, which I recommend Christ to you. It requires right view of yourself, not being prideful, boastful, us because you are more beautiful or intelligent than other people, but because you are made wonderfully and fearfully made by God. And even when we sin, Christ came to die for us so that we don't have to live with guilt and have a proper view of ourselves. We also mention that it is important to tap into God's abundant resources because only in Him, by the help of the Holy Spirit, can we have the type of spiritual, emotional, social, physical, and financial resources to undergird our abundant living. And today what I've shared is that abundant living requires abundant disciplines. Living with some disciplines in your spiritual life, in your emotional life, in your economic life, in your social life, and taking care of your body and the temple of God. I trust that as next week, we go into the specificities, starting with the spiritual disciplines of abundant livers. Lord be with you, shalom, and continue to engage us on social media, in the YouTube of Professor Stephen Aden, and also ZFM. My favorite is Station of Integrity, where we will be sharing these simultaneously. Lord.